Thinking of enjoying fresh vegetables this summer? Want to have some to freeze or can for winter eating? Fresh vegetables are highly nutritious and easy on the wallet. Now's the time to plan that garden. First, you'll need a notebook to keep track of your garden. In this notebook, you can make a list of what to plant and sketch the layout of the garden. The notebook also allows you to keep track of your garden from one year to the next. You can note what you did plant and when, how well it produced, any insect or disease problems, and ideas for next year. A notebook helps to keep track of plant rotation each year, which is necessary to minimize insect and disease problems. You can refer to this plan next year so you don't plant the same vegetable in the same area. By rotating crops, you'll reduce the amount of soil-borne diseases and overwintering insects in the soil. Next, consider the location of your garden. Be sure to find the sunniest place in your yard to site your vegetable garden with at least six hours of direct sunlight per day. Vegetable production will be even higher when your garden receives eight to ten hours of sunlight per day. The old adage, out of sight is out of mind, is true with vegetable gardens. When we can't see them, we're less likely to maintain and harvest from them. An abundance of weeds can limit vegetable production and hide ripening vegetables, so be sure to place your garden where you can see it and have ready access. Avoid low areas where water can pond after a rainfall event. In addition, choose a location close to a water spigot, hydrant, or rain barrel to make watering easier. As for the size, if this is your first garden, remember to start small. A beginning gardener's enthusiasm for maintaining a large garden can quickly be discouraged when weeds and the heat of summer become a reality. Other factors that will determine the size of your garden include if you know you are going to have a very busy year, if there's not much room in your yard, or you don't need or want much produce. A good starting size is 10 feet by 10 feet. You may need to add more square footage if you plan to grow vegetables that take up a lot of space, like sweet corn, squash, or watermelon. You can increase the size as you gain experience, interest, and time. Next, choose the vegetables you'd like to plant, keeping in mind your family's preferences, the size of your garden, and whether you'd like to preserve some of the vegetables for winter use. So how do you know what varieties will do well in your garden? Look in seed catalogs and extension publications for recommendations. Talk to neighbors and friends who are avid gardeners to find out their favorites. Try a new vegetable, too. You can get early, mid, and late season varieties of some vegetables for season-long harvest. There are determinate tomato plants, where the tomatoes are ready to harvest in a short window of time, which are great for canning or freezing. Indeterminate tomatoes bear tomatoes over a long period of time, so you always have fresh produce to eat. Also, try to find disease and insect-resistant varieties to reduce maintenance in the garden. Traditionally, vegetable gardens are planted at the existing soil elevation. There is no need to purchase materials as you would with constructed raised beds, and gardening equipment can be readily moved in and out as needed. The downside to gardening at the existing soil elevation is that compaction from foot traffic can inhibit plant root growth and have a negative impact on production. Another way to plant your vegetables is in raised beds. Add soil and compost so the bed is 8 to 12 inches above the existing soil. Beds are about 2 to 4 feet wide so that you don't have to walk on them, which minimizes soil compaction and damage to plant roots. The benefits of raised beds are you can easily improve drainage by mixing in compost, vermiculite, or perlite, and raised beds warm earlier in the spring than traditional gardens so you can plant earlier. Raised beds can be constructed by mounding the soil, which is simple to do but more prone to soil erosion from hard rains, or you can construct a frame to contain it. Regular untreated lumber can be used for a raised bed and will last about 8 to 10 years. Treated lumber or cedar can be used for raised beds and may last 30 years or more but will entail an initial higher investment. Whether you use raised beds or not, there are several techniques for how you plant the seeds or transplants in your vegetable garden. One method you can use is straight rows or furrows, putting the seeds or transplants in a single row. Straight rows are the easiest to cultivate, control insects, and harvest because they're very accessible. 
Keep in mind, however, that where space is limited, rows are not the most efficient use of that space. Another method to place seeds or transplants is using the block planting method, sometimes called wide row planting. You sow seeds or place transplants within a block or wide row 4 to 24 inches wide. With this method you have greater yields in a smaller space. Because all the plants are about the same height, they share equally in sunlight. There is a more efficient use of space and nutrients. Some vegetables suitable for this type of planting include carrots, beets, radishes, onions, leaf lettuce, spinach, chard, cutting celery, and bush beans. The third technique is square foot gardening, where you divide your garden into squares one foot by one foot using lath or some other material. The number of plants per square foot depends on the size and space requirements of the plant. For example, you would plant 16 radish seeds per square, 9 bean seeds per square, or 1 broccoli plant per square. Also greater attention is given to successive planting, that is, the technique of planting a second or third crop in a space when a previous vegetable has stopped producing. For instance, say the spinach you planted has stopped growing in early June when the temperatures have risen. A pepper plant would be a good successive planting to put in after you pulled out the spinach plants. Now that you know what you're going to plant, where you're going to plant it, and the planting technique you'll use, it's time to draw a scale diagram of your vegetable garden in your garden notebook. Draw in beds and furrows. Arrange the crops in the garden, putting perennials like asparagus and rhubarb in an area where they won't be disturbed by future plantings. Plant rows running north to south so they can get the best exposure to the sun. Place taller plants like corn or trellised plants like pole beans on the north side so they won't shade shorter plants in the morning or afternoon. Put your sweet corn in a square instead of a few rows for better pollination and more ears. Begin planning for any soil amendments you'll need. The best way to determine if your vegetables would benefit from added nutrients or compost is to have your soil analyzed. Check with your local extension office for soil labs in your area. Sometimes the results can be difficult to interpret, so contact an extension master gardener for help. From these recommendations, you'll be able to plan what amendments are needed and can be incorporated into the soil when the garden is tilled. Consider water needs in your garden. Vegetables grow and produce well when they receive one inch of water per week. If precipitation falls short of this amount, irrigating will keep the plants healthy. When it comes to watering, drip irrigation is more efficient than using a sprinkler. Also, leaves stay dry, which reduces disease problems. Place the drip irrigation lines early in the season so you aren't disturbing plants. Think about using mulch to reduce water loss and suppress weed seed germination. Straw, leaves, compost, and shredded newspaper can be used for mulch. Do you often see deer, rabbits, or raccoons in your yard? If so, make plans for protecting your garden from wildlife damage. Consider constructing a fence to keep out the four-legged critters and use netting to protect the garden from birds. Although these cost more, they are more effective and dependable than repellents. Contact your extension office for more details. Gardeners consider planning a part of gardening. It fulfills our need to garden even while the ground is still frozen. Planning your vegetable garden now will save you time and labor later. This program was written by Kathleen Q and Jan Hingstrom, University of Nebraska-Lincoln Extension, and narrated by Kathleen Q.